Hey y'all, so I'm in the studio here and I was just organizing and thinking about um, our you know, upcoming videos and different projects that I'm working on. And I pulled out my stash of slides. So I thought I would just give you a sneak peek into what we're gonna do April in our Cabinet of Curiosities journal. I get a lot of these vintage slides from, it's this one woman on Etsy. I'll leave the link to her. her. They're very, very reasonable, and she really does her collections really well. So you can see if you want flora, fauna, there's some medical slides in there. There are all kinds of stuff. There's travel slides. So whatever you want to infuse your journals with an old world kind of feeling with these sort of slides, go ahead and grab some. I have like different ones from, you know, places in Spain, Mexico. I have some medical slides. I have some the Korean religious uh, temple slides. And so like, actually these were given to me by one of my um, patrons who sent me a whole batch of these. So there is a, a slide app that you can put use on your phone that will actually take a picture of this slide and turn it into a, a picture that you can print out. So it's very easy to do. It's a free app. You can get like 20 or so of them for free, I think, and then it's $4.95 a month. But what I generally do is just do a bunch of them in that one month for $4.95, and then you can discontinue it, and then you have a lot of images. So just want to let you know, so if you have slides, go looking for them. If you don't have any, but you're fascinated about how this all works out, then you know you can grab them for as little as three or four dollars from this particular woman's site and you may find other there's all kind of Etsy sellers that do these but I've used hers so that will be below the video so yeah I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek into what we're going to be doing with these in our journals next month all right see you guys bye bye happy Saturday everyone and so we are back to work in our Cabin of Curiosities, Jelly Jumpadori. And you see, I have some new Seth After Eye Zinks on my table here. Oh, Seth sent these to me, and I cannot wait to jump in, but I wanted to do them with you all. So I have not used them yet. And I thought it's always nice to get some of our papers um, made, you know, like our, a lot of our own mark making papers and yummy textures and what have you. We just finished doing our you know, our mass making of our collage scraps and, um, you know, throughout the pages of our books, it's so nice to infuse these, um, the papers that we make, because that's what this is all about, right? Creating our own art, our own papers and what have you. So I thought, let's do a quick session with the colors. I thought what we would do is do each of the colors. So that way you guys would see which colors, what they look like. And so if you wanted to grab some, they're not already on back order because this stuff goes so fast. Um, but even if they're on back order, you just always put your order in or give Seth a call. His number is always right there on his, his um, website or send him an email and he will definitely put you on a wait list. And as soon as stuff comes in, he always lets, reaches out, let you know it's in. So it's the better way to make sure you get the products than just to say, oh, I'll check back, oh, I'll check back. And every time they're gone. So trust me. He is like so cool and accommodating. We're going to go through these colors. They're, they are butterscotch, rusty saffron, um, underwater, bronze, morning mist, and silver shine. I can't wait to see what these look like. And then what we'll do is we'll then move into our book and work on, I'm going to work on the new collage page that we did. Um, and hopefully use some of these papers in them and we're just going to keep on working so let's get this out of the way and i'll be back ready to work with our inks okay so i love working on our um so when i do when i work with the inks i really love working on our glassine paper it's a great use for continuing to make mark do our mark making on various types of paper. So I'm always putting one of my glass scenes down and I'll probably use several of them because we're gonna be working with different colors. So go ahead and lay that out. We also like to get my, my water bottle 
so that we can also move some of this color around as we need it. I'm going to, let's start off with the white because we want to see what these colors are going to look like. And on the craft, you know, they'll, they'll be a little bit earthier tones. So let's start off with silver mist. I mean, silver shine. So excited. My hands are going to be a mess by the time I'm done, but I like just working with the paper. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's like a blue silvery color. So you know how we do, we just ball our paper up and just kind of start putting it in. Oh my goodness, look at this color already. It is really a beautiful metallic silver. Oh boy. Okay, I'm already in love. So I'm gonna work with the colors quick because I don't, you know, I wanna take a lot of time, but I wanna, you know, show you the colors so that you can grab them and then we'll do a full session with them and do some other mark making. Probably also do a session where we do the mark making with the Posca pins on the jelly plate. And if we already have these papers done, it goes a long way to, um, oh, this is good. to really making some really amazing papers. You see, I keep on balling it up because that's how you would get those really nice um, textures in the paper. And, um, and then we'll, I'm gonna let this dry. This is gorgeous. I think what I'm also gonna do is let's get the brown. We'll do smaller pieces. That way it won't take as much time. And then we'll use some of this to finish up that last. So let's go ahead and use some brown. That way we get the full, since we like using this craft paper as well, this color in the archival tissues. Yes, just what I thought. So rich. I'm not gonna put a lot of water or anything with these because I want us just to see what the colors are. But when we actually go to make some more, we can definitely do that. But these papers right now, I would definitely use to, um, to jelly print over um, and do the mark making. Okay, so let this dry, but look at it on the craft gorgeous. You can really see this color is so rich. It's like a blue silver. It's almost like a pewter. Oh. And you can sort of see the difference on the two papers as they dry. Alrighty, let's keep going because if I take too much time, we won't get through with them all. So let's go to um, morning mist. Oh, this looks like this is going to be amazing. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot of oohing and on, so get ready because I haven't, I haven't used these yet, so I wanted to use them with you all. So this is like a, a, um, I'm going to split some of this paper too, that way it'll go a little faster. So we'll do this in half. Um, it's like a, I'm sort of seeing like a sea foam, but a darker kind of, um, oh boy, this is good. These are such earthy, beautiful colors. Oh, oh yeah. Remember to just always take the tissue paper, ball it up a bit. These make such great papers to work with our journals. So this is like a green. It's got a metallic to it, which is beautiful. And it's like, um, I, I just keep on seeing sea foam. He, he's called this morning mist. It's like a gray green. It, you know what it reminds me of too? One of my um, favorite colors over on um, Tim Holtz, which is 
what is that color? It's, um, it'll come to me because I always use it in the distressed. This is gorgeous. So let's get, do it in the brown so we can, look at that color. I have it in, this, in the stamp pad. The fact that these are metallics are just everything as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and see just a slightly darker paper, you just get a completely different color range. That's why when you're working, go ahead and use both um, your darker papers and your lighter papers because you get a lot of mileage out of the same color just using different backgrounds. Okay, so. Oh, look at this. Such a tie, beautiful tie-dyed kind of effect. And so easy. Okay. Let's go to butterscotch. This over here. I don't want them to get. Oh, look at this. Trying to work around this so I can get the pure color without mixing it into some of the others. I'm getting a little bit of color mixture here, but oh boy, is this good. This is amazing. Was this again butterscotch? Woo! What a wonderful goldenrod, yellowy. Oh boy. But once again, so earthy. And it doesn't surprise me because Seth's own pal palette, where he uses a lot of color, they're very earthy colors. <clears throat> and I like that too. I, I love earthy colors. Sort of the, you know, more of earth tone in all the shades. Okay, let's do this on the brown. I'm trying to avoid that area. Cause I don't want, I didn't want to mix them, but boy, is that a good area. Okay. So put that there. Let's just pick up some more on this edge. <clears throat> okay. This edge right here, I'm going to grab that cause it's wet and we're going to get those gray tones in here with the metallic. So you can see, you'll be able to see the difference. It's almost like a, um, a khaki green. Okay. And let's do this with the brown. I do this. I keep on trying to twist just to get these, the edges good, you know, when you're doing the paper. Oh boy. Look at this. Wow. Yes. Absolutely. Look at this on this. I can't wait to see it dry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with that because I like the marks that are there. Okay, let's flip it to this side and do. This one is Bronze Shimmer. Okay. I don't want to take too long with this. I definitely want to show you all this. I will be using these papers and I will make more. So we're going to use the white. Remember, ball it up. Yeah. Oh boy, this is really nice. It's almost like a rose gold kind of bronzy color. Wow. Look at that. Oh, it's really like a, um, it's a bronze with a lot of gold in it. <laughs> but you guys know I love, let's put a little bit more on there. It is definitely a bronze. It's almost like a rose gold. I would say it's drying like a rose gold. If I had to say, 
So less copper and more gold tone. But it seems to be like a really subtle color as it's drying too, like a, like a nice pop, but not overwhelming. And that's the problem I have with a lot of bronzes is I feel like they're just a little bit, because I prefer more gold, the gold, the warm gold tones in my work, I find sometimes the bronze brings a little bit too much of the coppery uh, orange tones in, <clears throat> which makes it a little harder to integrate. But you can see how when it dries, you're going to see so much more. You can see how subtle it is, but it's beautiful. So let's do that on the brow. You can see it on my hands. <laughs> oh, oh. Two more to go. But yeah, I'll do a full session with these. And we'll do mark making. We'll do um, we'll do a full session where um, we'll do these. I almost feel like we have to do two sessions. We're gonna have to do one where we do the papers and make all these mark making papers and then come back and um oh look at that and then come back and do a jelly printing session on top of them to really flesh out some really nice mark make papers that we'll be able to continue to use not only in our in our cabinet of curiosities but all of our other you know collage and journaling and art book projects so okay this is really good let that dry. Since I still have some down here, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it up on this one. Okay, that's good. And then we have, let's go for, we'll use this paper now. So we're trying to keep it from being tainted. So this is Rusty Saffron. Let's just see what this is going to do. Wow, this kind of reminds me of the pomegranate that he has, but I, I'm sure it's not as, um, it probably is going to be a lot more orange, I would think, than the pomegranate. Wow, this is gorgeous. Yeah, it really is more of an orangey red. Nice, 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 nice. And I like a good red in my work, so this Perfect. It really is a good red. Oh. It is very Eastern. It, it was a very Indi like Indian, uh, from India, sort of, a, or even an Asian sort of red. It reminds me of the reds from my, um, my seal paste, you know, when from stamping. See, it reminds you of that red. This is a really good, good red. So let's get a little bit more on there to get some in this area. We're just going to kind of crunch it. And then let's, yeah, just lay it down flat. Then we can pick up some of the pattern in some of these other areas. This is definitely a red lover's color. But I'm going to tell you, this color is going to integrate so much with the earthy tones. I can just, I can see it when we go to make our papers. Oh, that's good. So let's see what it's going to look like on our craft paper. Okay, we're about 14 minutes in. So that gives us a good time to be able to do our journal too. So we're going to do this on the craft paper. Oh, see how that's really earthy looking on the brown. It's giving it that little extra colorway. And you get a different relationship to that red. Okay. Ready? Okay. 
This is fabulous. That's really good. Let's see the difference between the two. Let's sort of see. Oh. And then the last one is going to be underwater, which is a green. Oh, it's a turquoise green. Seth, these are good, my friend. These are good. He's been telling me about these since December. They were supposed to be released a little earlier. So he's I'm notorious, he's notorious, I'm notorious for him sending me things and saying, don't show it until such and such a date. And then a couple times I've forgotten and kind of showed it. And I'm like, mostly in the Patreon group, but still. So this time I was very careful to make sure that I stayed within the date. So he released these, I think, two weeks ago. And I was going to do this last week, but you know, I was out of town with the um, baby shower so I had just gotten them it wasn't enough time to do them for last week's video so I know that I'm well within the release date <laughs> but the problem now is that they could be gone or nearly gone or some of them are there and some of them aren't but like I said don't worry don't worry just um reach out to Seth and he'll put you on the wait list just so you guys know, this isn't, I, I don't have an affiliate arrangement with Seth. We're just friends. He knows I love his products and uh, he always shares and gifts them to me. And uh, no strings attached, but he knows I love his stuff. So uh, it's easy for me to share it with you all because I think they're just really great. And I like the fact that they're dyes. And because we're jelly printers and we like things that, look at that green. So pretty. Let's do it on the brown. Because we guys, you know, mostly of you guys in this community are jelly printers along with me. So we're always looking for things that don't, the color doesn't move. So it's one thing to do all these wonderful papers, but then if you go put them back on the jelly plate and then they start bleeding, it's not always what you want. Sometimes you want that effect, but not always. So. Um, I love these because these are dyes. They are definitely dyes. So once they're in the um, paper and they dry, they're there. They won't move. And I think that's cool. All right. Really loving these colors. Ugh. I'm going to show you something with this one. If we just take that one that green and go back. I'm not going to do a lot of this because if I do this video, this is all we'll be doing. We'll do this next week. We take the butterscotch and put it over top of this green. And then let's get some of that red too. Let's see. These, oh, these colors are going to mix so nicely. See what you get already. You get this really nice olive green. Just by mixing those two. That's why it's good to get a number of its colors because all these dyes really mix well together. They blend nicely. So you can actually make other colors out of the main colors. So it really allows you to create your own palette. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with some of these other areas. I'm going to pick up this this color here. Oh gosh, look at this. And so this is, and I, this is, I'm just giving you guys an example of what we're going to do next week. And we just have a full printing session. So jump on and get those inks because they'll come um, pretty quickly. And then pull out the ones you already have. So you'll have those two to work with, but look at that. See how we get this beautiful orange and this olive color from just mixing this butterscotch in with the palette we had down here. That's why I like working on this um, 
glassine paper because we can go back in because it has this sort of finish on it. The colors will move around a lot longer um, before they totally set in. And so you can come back with your other color palettes and really activate this again. So here we have the red. And this, and look, this is a completely different, this is the butterscotch. So we'll look at that. This is the butterscotch on the papers. And then this is the green. But look, when you take the butterscotch and mix it with these colors, see the, the third palette. So this is like your tertiary colors where you're taking some primary colors, mixing them, they're complementary colors, you know, the red and the green. And when you mix them, you're going to get your tertiary colors, which are your third, uh, a third layer call, you know, on the color wheel. And you get a whole nother palette. And then these are, see how this is like a beautiful rose gold? Oh, these are pretty. That's the gold. And then this is the, the mist. Uh, no, which one is this? This is morning mist. It's just gorgeous. And then this is the silver. Yeah, the silver shine. And look how vibrant this has become. It's almost, it looks like pewter. Those are her papers. So, okay, that was a good 20 minute session. So we'll go from here over to our journal and we're going to uh, I'll incorporate some of this onto those journal pages. And then, you know, we'll be back for a full paper session next week. Okay, see you in a minute. Alrighty, good. So a lot of stuff back on the desk here and Let's get to working on these pages. I feel like I want to, well, this is our next spread. Remember, I went on and glued this down. I really like it here. Um, so what I've noticed too here is how on this page, you know, we had gotten this to like 80%. It's not done completely. But then look when it opens out on this page. Look how nicely this already goes, was there. All those happy accidents. So I kind of want to also treat create this spread like this is a part of that spread. So I want to think in terms of, let me get this cover out of the way. Um, I want to think in terms of this whole thing in that way as well. So I pulled out a number of things. I definitely can see where this paper, the silver working nicely because I got this bit of uh, mulberry paper that's been tea stains. I think those go nicely together. So also this with the um, underwater on it, look, look how nicely it goes with our stained papers we've been using there. See, so that palette is good. So I'm gonna pull that one out. I am gonna pull this bronzy one and I'm going to leave a bit of that red there because I could see maybe use it as an accent. And the rest of these I'm going to move out the way for right now. And then there's one other one in here, right? this one. The um, sac, no, this isn't saffron. This is a butterscotch. So I'm going to keep those there. And I also went and pulled out some of my other bits. So I sort of saw maybe using the shells because they really go nicely in with this palette and it kind of keeps with our cabinet of curiosities. I also have this piece of Kuba cloth, which is an antique piece. I have a collection of these and I've done scraps pa um, packages with them before. Some really nice ones actually. And I don't have a lot of it. I mean, I have a lot, but not enough to make a tons of packages. So I think the next time I do some packages of mark making, I'll include one good scrap of this in there because otherwise when you buy these are like the whole length of it's like six seven eight hundred dollars and then you're not going to want to cut it up who wants to cut it up but a friend of mine she used to use these in her um her clothing design she did really beautiful one-off like art as you know as as clothing and she when she had these scraps left i would buy them from her because i'm like it's no way we got to use those this is a good shell there as well so we're going to use that. 
Um, I just pulled the printables as a reference. Maybe, maybe won't use them, but I have it here. And then I pulled out some of the papers from the, um, the collection of marble papers I've shown you before. I think this is December collection, but I think like some of these, and I've already done glazing on them. So like this one could work well. There's a few of them could really work well on here. And then just some of the text. And then I think some more of these mulberry papers. And I just had these to the side just in case. These are like old wall, like photographs of old walls in Mexico that I took. This is in the sep in the August 21 or 2020, 2020 edition. So if I do use those, I'll make sure to put the link down. All righty, let's get going. So I want to sort of figure out how we're going to do this. You know, once again, I'm kind of basically clueless. I think I want to put something in here because we can put this underneath there. And I was sort of thinking, this bronzy is pretty. And I was also sort of thinking the pewter too. So what we're going to do, <laughs> so I'm going to take a bit of this. I still like that staining there, but I want some of this so I'm just going to rip it and this is where being able to lift this up really comes in handy I don't want to get rid of my ink wad though so we're just going to put a bit of this right in this section here just to break up the pattern a bit and also add some additional texture to get my glue book and glue sticks so we can get things going. Okay, so people are coming in this already this morning, so you may start hearing a talking and stuff, but that's what happens in a, a shared studio space, which is uh, the collective, which is nice. Okay, so we're going to put this in underneath here. I don't want to get, I want my ink white. I don't mind a little bit being over. So we're just kind of adding a little color there. That's nice. So you can sort of see how that went down. And I want to put, let's do that too. So we're just about to put a piece over top of um, this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue back here too. Cause you know, we leave these up for this very reason. So put that down. And then this piece will go over top of it. And I kind of want to start integrating it from this page over, you know. So we're sort of pushing it over into this other fold here. Um, okay, so. Um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of this white edge that's there and kind of get rid of it from back there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this as well. I feel like this is ready to go because I'm seeing it in the light of this whole piece and I'm not going to want it. I'm sorry. I hope I'm on camera. My goodness. Sorry about that. If I was a little off, try to remind myself to look up. So let's, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this these pages are really flippy. Sorry about it. So I really kind of want that to integrate over on this side. So let's get a little bit more glue underneath this edge. Glue stick. Okay. So like this. We've got one there. Let's do this. Um, okay. Now on this side, because I'm going to come back to some of this, but let's kind of get some of this all sussed out because I believe I'm going to put this on here, but I want a little bit more colors. So let's, let's find some colors that will work with this. 
but bring a little bit more color into the palette because I, you know, like to do this, it, you know, that's kind of expected. It's a little monochromatic. Um, but maybe this one, it's kind of got the blues and some of the rusty tones in there. Or, let's see. We want it to work, but we don't want it to be too matchy matchy, right? I think I'm gonna go with this one. I like this one. So let's go ahead and get it. Okay, where's my roller? <laughs> oh boy. Here it is. And then we're gonna use some of those shells too. So let's just get this, this going first. We'll see how wide we wanna make it. Be like this. I don't want it super wide because I'm actually going to glue this down. I'm not going to make it. Uh, well, we could, yeah. We could make it like a belly band so that it's a tuck spot. But yet, I'm still going to cover that with other stuff, so it's not going to be just this. Alrighty. So this would go down here. Do so I want this edge? This is good. So this has the champagne gold glazing on it, folk art. Sometimes I like putting it right in the middle so you can just slip some things underneath it. Let's go ahead and get this a backing on it because I still want to put this down. So maybe I would kind of on the page something like that so it becomes like a tuck place but not too much okay so let's go ahead and glue this and just to strengthen it the back of these are so good too because I stained them and because I use a um, inkjet they <clears throat> the colors run when I stain them so I kind of really control it because I like to use the backs of the papers too, or if I want to use it as a double-sided piece, you just get this really nice sanding on the back. This we're going to cover up because we're making it stronger. Okay, so let that dry. And that's what we're letting that dry. want to do some more stuff. I'm trying to decide if I want love this gold paper. Might use a bit of that. Also, this is good too. Oh, this gives a nice, this gives a nice um, vibe to our traveled you know, journeys, look of our book. The whole reason that, you know, World Cabinet of the Curiosities came about, right, is because people didn't travel the world like we do now. And those that did would bring, bring pieces of the world back with them. So they always had that very well <coughs> collected look to it. I want this to, to hang off the edge of the page because it has like this sewn edge. So I want it to end up being sort of like a flap that'll hang out the book. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry, going to go ahead and just rip this. You know, I like to rip it when it's a little bit wet because what it does is it allows you to have sort of like that little frayed edge. Okay. This and this. Okay. So, looking up, making sure I'm still in the... <laughs> 
the viewfinder, like they say. All right. So see, I'm thinking about this will end up being like a really nice belly band there. So maybe something like this. Just kind of bringing that in there. But we are going to use, oh, you know what we can do? I see it. We're getting the vision. To get this pop of color in here. Like, you know I love my monochromatic palette, but I do like my pops of color. You have to have your pops of color. And since this is, uh, I love this red coral from this, you know, napkin. Let's go ahead and put this down as a back, back piece. It's a background piece, which will that'll wrap around. And then we're going to put this belly band over it so it will make a nice backdrop. And we're going to use some of this too. Really just going to kind of load it up. just to get a lot of layers. And then this will go down here. Maybe I'll cut a piece of it so that, okay. So I like that. So then let's get, I wonder if we could put a little bit of this blue green in here. I like this color. So let's grab some of this and see if this will go as an underneath layer here. Oh yeah. This is good. All right. I really like the way this is fleshing out. So I'm getting, I'm bringing some color back into my palette. They're all earthy and I really like the way this page is fleshing out. So then over here, I kind of want to get all my elements together. So when I go to gluing everything down, it'll all make sense. So let's grab, just kind of ripping some of these shells. So maybe I can kind of put a bit of this around over in here, but I think I'll get rid of those. I don't really like that. And then I want to kind of stick with these colors, with the these uh, yellow green tones. Um, let's see. Let's grab this one too. This is nice. Maybe even with a little bit of the coral would be okay. So I'll just grab this whole bit and then we can decide what we're going to use. Okay. So, all right. So that's good. We have these pieces. So let's go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to take this page out. This is really fumbly, I know. But it's because our book is starting to get thick. And when it does that, it's kind of hard to get all flat. But that's the beauty of this particular style book, is we can um, pull the pages out. Try to get this stuff out the way. Come on, come on. Oh, I wanted to use this piece too. Let's put that over there. So we're going to use the Uhu here. Because I'm working with this, oh, this tissue. And um, in fact, I think I'm going to just put it on here. It was a little stiff. I haven't used it in a few days. So I guess it was like, no. So I'll just glue this down because I know I'm going to put this other color down as well. So I might as well just get it. The other thing about doing it on the, on the substrate versus here, you can also get the papers more crinkly because they won't have started, the glue won't, you know, start softening the fibers so that you lose all the little crinkly parts. So that's also something to think about when you're doing this. Kind of leave that little ragged edge. I kind of want it to be crunchy. 
So let's do this. I'm gonna let it go around the other side. So when we get there, we'll have this little bit hanging out to see what we do with it. Alrighty, so let's see this way I can keep the crinkles in it. Just kind of lay it down and just kind of keep it crinkle and just crunch it and flatten it like that. You know, so you kind of get, you can keep all those nice ridges and stuff in it. And then over here, I'm just gonna rip this some so it's not so predictable of an edge. And then we'll just go ahead and let this peek on the other side a little bit. All right, this is looking good. Okay, so what I wanna do is put a little bit of something there a little see through -y because I have a little glue there and I don't want to have that stick to anything. So let's just go ahead and put this down. And it'll just kind of integrate that whole area. The belly band is going to be there anyway, but it just keeps it from being too sticky. This here. Alrighty. Fingers are getting sticky. Keep out the time there. This edge was a little too straight. I just want to rip it a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. So, I'm looking good there. Let's just go ahead and wrap this around too. I'm loving this paper with the texture there. Now, what we want to do is put a little bit of this down this edge just to incorporate some of this Vedic text and we're going to use the uhu because it's the mulberry paper so it's thin but it's pretty strong so you could use the giotto on this paper but it's not necessary because it doesn't need that much to hold it down let's put this here there. and this is see-through so you can really see all the way through to the napkin layer as well them. And then this is going to go right about here. Let's see where our fold line is. The journal. Okay. So I want to get this right there. And that just breaks up the pattern some. It gives us some extra layers. And um, for this, we're going to use our PVA. You get a nice strip. Okay, so you kind of keep things nice and tight and in the line here without going over too much, but you can still use your glue stick if you don't have any PVA. Just kind of smash it around a little bit there. Okay. Let's put this right about there. Where are my napkins? Okay. Alrighty. I like that. We got this strip that's coming right in and sort of breaking it all up, but it's still like a, a, a tuck spot. Because remember our journal is all about collecting bits and pieces, the feathers, leaves anything that we're collecting from our travels even if it's just our daily hikes <laughs> we can stick there now this piece i'm gonna put this down so this is going to go slightly underneath so i don't need this full piece so i just want this to hang off the side so 
since this stuff is precious, we're just going to cut it because that can be used for something else. And then this will go right here. So it'll just bump up against the belly band, but not kind of be in the way of it. So I want it to hang off the edge as well and off the side. So that's good. This I'm going to put down as a solid piece. I'm not going to have it so that anything's going on behind it or anything like that. So we'll just use the Giotto because it's going to be powerful. It's going to really hold this piece down. Definitely giving us our vibe here. So, oh yes. So I know as I'm kind of continuing to move and clear things out, let me know if you would like me to put a bundle of some of my mark making papers, a lot of the stained papers and all the rain stain. I have so many papers, you guys know that. But I tell you when I go to make my books, which is what I'm using a lot of these papers for, some of I've been collecting a lot of vintage book covers and we make a, we do a lot of our book making over in our Patreon in the, um, the BTS level, which is the second level. It's, um, it's just 25 a month, but I'm telling you, we do all kind of books over there and I'm teaching another new structure. So if you're a book lover, if you like making your own books and journals and then, you know, putting your, your found papers and all the stained papers into books, really looking to expand, you know, what you do with them, that's the place to go. And, you know, normally when we work on a book, we'll work on it for a month and a half or so. There's just a lot of moving parts to that whole thing. Okay, so this looks good. Let's put this back in here. I really like that. I feel like I'd like to put a little something like, I don't know, it's a little bit of language, I'm not sure what, so as opposed to wasting time, I'll come back to that, I'll come back to this, I, I have an idea, but I think I want to get my vintage paper, so if I don't do that this week, we'll, we'll add to it next week, okay, so now, that's all looking really good. So see how we got some color and some language and some information on against this more ab abstract collage. So it's always a juxtaposition between our intuitive scripting, our intuitive collage, sort of that very organic, you know, very sort of just natural movement against maybe something that's saying that's a little bit more informational, like the, the, the coral and the various languages and the cloth. So you always want to do this push and pull to really get this sort of rich journaling, um, but you know, not being so predictable. All right. It's so just kind of talking about, you know, what goes on or how I think about this. You know what, why am I not using, why aren't I not using my clips? Did anybody tell me why I haven't pulled these clips out yet? I'm just fighting with this book. And I normally just, Clip it down, then we don't have to fight it. <laughs> okay, there, much better. So what we want to do is now this is our, our sort of like our map looking piece. And I want to, so when this gets folded back, so I had the idea that I wanted to put this down here. And I'm thinking I'm going to leave this more structured line. Let's just go ahead and rip it on the other side of this black line here. Can you guys see? Okay, yeah, I'm a little off the table, but see what I'm doing. This is on to, um, on onion skin. And I see a lot of you run and get that onion skin. I'm telling you all, I always get thanked for, oh, well, thank you, you found some, uh, some more onion skin. Because it really does work nicely. So I want to put this there. And then I want to get some of these shells around. So let's go ahead and figure our placement here. 
think this is kind of cool. So let's just get more of a, a raw edge. So I kind of like that there. And let's see where we would put maybe. I don't want so much of that. Maybe sort of more of this. Suppose I did that and then put this over top of it. Oh, I like that. And then we'll get rid of this one at the bottom. So it sort of kind of begins to tell a story. So I like this. Put that there. And because it's, you know, the napkin, you know, we can still see through it. And this is on top, so it's not too much red, but it'll juxtapose against this paint over here. So we get a little bit of red. And then we have this piece right here that I think I would like to maybe, oh, let's integrate it right there because it works with this printable that we have of that sort of um, fabric. And then right there, I think, I think that's really nice. That sort of flushes the page out. So it puts a little bit more on here um, without, I think, being too much. You don't want too much, too much. Because I have this other side, I can put some of this in. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and get these down. So starting, we're gonna use the Uhu again because we don't need, sorry, had the camera stopped a little bit right there. But you can see how this shell now integrates these pages, it works, the sort of the goldy tones here work so nicely with our, our papers there. We have this over there. So let's just go ahead and glue this piece down. And I think I'll stop there because I know we're come up on an hour and 90% rule. <laughs> you know, it's always 80%, 90%. If I, when I'm saying the difference between like 80 and 90, it's because I feel like that I've come up, you know, within that 80. So if I say 80, it's like, okay, I still have that much to go. When I say 90 in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm almost there, probably about 10% more, but it's the 80% rule, right? We always stop around at a place where, you know, go ahead and put some of this down here, where we feel like we're not completely done, but we want to give ourselves that space to think about it. so as to not overdo or overwork your piece. Okay. So by this being on the onion skin, here again, we're gonna get that level of tr translucent. And remember layering is all about translucent layers. If you do too many opaque layers, you know, it kind of becomes pointless to layer in a way can't see anything. So that's why it's so important for us to kind of work all of our different papers, our onion skins, napkins, tracing paper, our um, glassine papers, all these, you know, give these various layers of translucent. Okay, this is looking good. So I definitely want to do more. I think we've done a chunk here. So let's go ahead and fold this back because now we want this to be integrated here and here. See, so now we've really brought um, a lot of what we were doing onto this signature here just by working this side of it. And now we have a nice integrated piece with our, our book cloth, I mean, our end paper. So the old book, you know, the old book look. Um, and 
And look how nicely that collage just integrated right in uh, to give complexity and what have you to a page. And then we just worked a lot of other images in. So, you know, it's like working your pages and I always work back and forth because to me, that's what helps the book come together. So all the pages integrate. It doesn't just look like we did this page and then we do the next page and then we do the next page and none of them work together. So it's always nice to go back through your book, see what you've done. I mean, look how nicely this just goes from here to this page. And the gold that's down here, you know, picks up the gold there. Uh, we have this, this mark making that picks up the mark making lines. And so we're going to flush this side out with a little bit more too. Um, probably after we get some more of these mark making papers done, I'll come and add some more here and probably some more from our, our cabinet of curiosity images, maybe like, um, there's some I haven't used yet. I can even see that skeleton of that kind of animal. Remember that one was in there? I sort of see that here as well. So I thought that was a good place to put that one. But anyhow, we're done. So we got some mark making, making some pages with our, the new colors in the set after. And I know I shared each color. I'll put the link below, but, um, and we flush these pages out with our using our collages from last week. So anyway, there we have it. I could go on and on, but I think we got a good chunk there. If you enjoyed this video, remember always thumb it up for me and then for us because it is, expands our community and gets it all out. If you're new to the channel, please hit that bell, subscribe, hit all so you get the notifications. I always list the premieres before they come up. And midweek, normally on Wednesdays, we do workshop this, which is just 10 minutes where we go in on a topic and we just micro dose that one topic of, you know, um, to really flesh it out. So if you have any questions about it, if you have any um, things that you'd like for me to do on the workshop, this questions that you've had, then put the comments below this video. Remember to look for our secret word <laughs> because we'll be doing a drawing next month. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Love you guys. Have a wonderful weekend and happy creating until next week. Take care. Bye. Love you.